Joining us now to react to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein's appearance on Capitol Hill today. Well, there she is, Fox News investigative reporter and contributor Sarah Carter. See that book? Now, early July, it's out. You can pre-order it on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. Hannity.com has the link. The Russia hoax. It will be the definitive book, the illicit scheme to clear Hillary Clinton and frame Donald Trump. Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Let's start with you from the legal standpoint. I captured a lot of inconsistencies, and I know you did. Well, one could say they were lies by Rod Rosenstein. For example, uh, he denied ever threatening members of the Intelligence Committee and the staff in a uh, January 10th meeting in which he threatened uh, to get his hands on their emails, texts, and phone records. That's a little um, scary, that, isn't it, in America? I talked to two people who were in on that meeting. They used the word threaten. And that he said he was threatening to obtain those texts and emails and so forth. So that did not appear to be terribly truthful by him. Um, he also wasn't truthful when he said, I'm not withholding any evidence of subpoenaed records. Well, his own letters refusing to turn over the documents or evidence that he's withholding. And yet he said, I'm not withholding. It, there wasn't a lot of truth in Rod Rosenstein today. Let me go get your initial reaction, Sarah Carter. I think that when uh, Trey Gowdy, when Representative Trey Gowdy questioned him and made his statement saying, if you have any evidence of this, Rod Rosenstein, let's just get it out right now. Stop dragging the American public, this administration and our country through the mud. If you have evidence that anything happened with the Trump administration, with President Trump, you know, get it out there. Let us know what it is. But he never once has done that. And if you look at the IG report, Sean, and you look at what happened today on Capitol Hill and how he evaded and avoided questions, and I tell you, Greg is 100 percent right. I've spoken to similar sources who have been in those backroom meetings with I Rod Rosenstein. I spoke to one person, too, that was personally the victim of the temper tantrum. A direct, Absolutely. A direct conversation that was relayed to me. So Rod Rosenstein flat out lied. He lied to Congress and he lied to the American people. And we just got to call a spade a spade, call it what it is. And if you look at the IG report, I want to go back to that really quick. And we look at Strzok himself. I was looking at it in more detail and talking with some sources tonight. And, you know, there's one point where Strzok tries to explain the insurance policy question. Remember in August, that text message that he sent to Lisa Page about having an insurance policy and talking with Andy McCabe. And he explained explains it away as saying, well, we were talking about how aggressive we were going to be or how overt we were going to be with this investigation. And when I was talking to FBI sources about this, they said that is so telling because at that moment in time, when he let that out to Horowitz, when he made that statement, he was basically saying, we're going to go after Trump, even if it means going after the people around him, even if it means putting disinformation out there in the media, even if it means arresting people for crimes that were committed 10 years ago, or maybe they're not even crimes, but just giving that aura around the president. So the chaos here really has been the FBI and the people on the seventh floor and the DOJ, and not even so much the Russians anymore. Well I said. mean, the real chaos in our country is coming from them. You know, Rosenstein said, I'm not trying to hide anything. And uh, I could let me I just made a short list and I wrote it down before the show. OK, we'll stop Trump. They hid that from everybody for a period of time or he withheld the fact that Strzok was a personal friend of Judge Rudolph Contreras, which you mentioned on this program last night. They refused to initially remember he begged up to the last minute right. uh, Paul Ryan not to release what became the Nunes memo, uh, which told us about FISA abuse. The DOJ tried to hide from Congress the fact that two of the most important investigators on both the Hillary and Russia probes were vehemently anti-Trump. He didn't want that out either. And Remember, December 2017, five months after Strzok and Page were shoved out the door, it was the inspector general that released the Strzok That's right. Page text. And That's what, only a short list, Greg. And what did Rosenstein say of the behavior of Peter Strzok today? He called it inappropriate, which has to be the most wow. colossal understatement of all time, especially when you consider the IG said that this is a man who had a willingness to abuse his position of power to influence 
an election. And but to Rod Rosenstein, oh, it, you know, it's just inappropriate. The things that stand out, we we all three of us have talked to at least one person. I've talked to one. You talked to two. Sarah, how many sources mm-hmm. do you have about his temper and that he made the threat that he denied today? I have at least four sources. Four sources. Confirmed. Okay. Well, yes. you're working harder than both Greg and I. But, <laughs> but then his, his refusal to recuse himself. Then Strzok's actions, as you just pointed, highly inappropriate. No, that would be rigging an investigation to influence a presidential election. And as your book says, Shot. a scheme to clear Hillary and frame Trump. That's what happened. Rosenstein said today, if it's appropriate, I'll recuse myself. It was appropriate a long long time ago. Time ago, he is a witness, investigator, prosecutor, judge, and jury, all ruled in the one. Say that again. He is the witness, key witness, investigator. He's mm-hmm. supervising the prosecution, which makes him a prosecutor. And he's also the judge and jury because he decides whether any charges would be brought. Why is he why is he only mad at me by name and not you and Sarah? I, I, frankly, I'm taking all the heat for you. <laughs> We're but, feeling but this a little jealous, Sarah, Sean. Sarah, they We're tried feeling to a little steal jealous. an election. They tried to yeah. undermine it to favor one candidate and screw the other candidate. That's why this matters and why the rest of the media Sean, would ignore this matters. story. I don't know. Sean, it matters because they they weaponized they weaponized our tools of law enforcement, the the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, and everything else. I mean, this is such an e- enormous investigation. We haven't even talked about the unmaskings yet. So they oh, weaponized the to tools. That. I know. And they weapon. We need to get back to that. We need to have answers. If the United States is going to move forward, if we're going to clean up our system, our FBI and our intelligence agencies, we need to know what happened. And the truth needs to come out. And the people that abused it need to be removed. One of the most striking moments occurred today when he was asked about Mueller's, not one, but two glaring conflicts of interest that are disqualifying. Rosenstein, so I I don't know of any uh, conflict of interest with Mr. Mueller. He apparently doesn't read newspapers because dozens and dozens of law professors and lawyers have written a myriad of columns explaining the disqualifying conflicts of interest of Robert Mueller. But Rosenstein is either a modern day Machiavelli or he is the most oblivious person to ever hold such a you high know what position. Somebody said to me today um, And I really believed them when they said this. Hey, you're trying to do this because you're undermining Mueller. I said, you're missing the whole story. But the more important thing that they said here is is they don't get it, that they really believe that these guys, and I'll throw this to Sarah, that they actually think that they were better, smarter, and that they think they're the super patriots and that we, the people, are stupid and that they knew better, which is why they had to save Hillary and had to undermine Trump. But now they're caught. And they undermined, they undermine the American people. They undermine the system that our nation is founded on, Sean. And just look at the most disparaging comments that Strzok and Page said about people that shop at Walmart, the American oh, people, smell people them. in Pennsylvania. No, 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 I can smell them. I, I can shop smell at Walmart. them. Probably I mean, there's me. nothing <laughs> more disgusting. Well, no, there's nothing more that disgusting than thinking that you know Amen. everything. They're thinking that you know everything. And that's the reason why President Trump won. Let's be honest. People were sick and tired, sick and tired of being told they weren't smart enough. They're not good enough. They don't know what to do. And you know what? The American people said, you know what? We are smart enough. We are good enough. And we don't really care what you have to say because we live in this country and we're going to vote for who we want to vote for. And if Trump hadn't have won, if Trump would not have won this election, think about what the alternative would be. We would never know what happened. People, I, well, Fox.com, please mark that, that Sarah monologue. You get the last word. People like Rosenstein and Comey and Strzok and Lisa Page and McCabe and the whole gang are a symbol of corruption and, and how absolute power corrupts absolute. We haven't been wrong on one thing, have we? Not yet. Not yet. It's scary. And the media has ignored it. Frankly, you guys deserve Pulitzer Prizes. Amazing. I can't wait for your book, Sarah. Great job as always.